Bloody hell, are we still doing these? It's subscription box time again, and we're going to start with Loot Crate, as is traditional. What are they proffering in their cardboard crate of gubbins this month? Well, we're about to find out. Oh, the, <laughs> the box has specimen X escaping. Mm. Yep, so that's like an alien containment thing this time. Kind of looks like they're trying to contain him in an industrial washing machine. That's probably a problem. Danger, danger, container breach. Danger, danger. Very 8-bit font there. I can't recognise which computer that's off the top of my head, but I think it's a system font from one of them. Error. Right, anyway, enough of that. What's in the... Bo oh, I'm quite excited by an alien thing in the box, but I'm not going to look at that yet. I'm going to look at the T-shirt. Right. Oh, there's a lot of bloody glitter on here, left over from the Halloween special. I should have cleaned that. Right. <clears throat> it's blue. Is it a Batman? Is it a ve Venom? The Venom is popular at the moment. I'll tell you what it is. It's an upside down. Um... Yeah, that's Venom, look. It says Venom using words. But the words look like streaky things on a web or something. And there he is, looking all evil and, I don't know, Tom Hardy-ish. Man, that was a film, wasn't it? In the sense that it's a consecutive set of images played one after another to create the illusion of movement. Um, yeah. That's all right, isn't it? It's all right. It's difficult to do Venom if you want, because you kind of think it wants to be on a black or dark T-shirt, but of course the character is as well, so they've gone for this light blue, which I think works quite well. Anyway, that's that. You can cover your shameful nakedness with that shirt. Um, ooh, it's a little statue thing. They're doing a lot of these little statue things these days, and I do enjoy them. Now I've seen the design, I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy this so much, but anyway, it's from Alien, that good film. Out for a walk. And look, he's, he's got a little face hugger on a lead and he's checking his phone while it, like, pisses up a fire hydrant. Oh, you know, that was a thing, wasn't it? Um, well, how do I uh, get in here without destroying it? Answer? I don't. Let's uh, slowly pull this away. Whilst reading about Joey Spiotto, who created a charming and lovable version of the legendary monster in his 2015 book, Alien Next Door. Oh, from caring for Jonesy the cat to keeping the house clean. It's, it's a very strange take on the xenomorph, really just because it's got that kind of everything cute cells idea behind it, I suppose. Right, come on. This is getting ridiculous now. Please just come off. Yay! We got inside. Package contains one figure, one base. Technically two figures? Hmm. Yep. It's well made. Uh, oh, yeah. Slightly rubbery plastic stuff is made out of, so, you know, it doesn't isn't brittle and doesn't snap and that. Uh, there's no detail on the alien's head apart from the little mouth. Can you see the little mouth? Can you see the little mouth, children? Um, yep, there's no details on the phone or anything. It's all quite uh, reductionist, but that is the style of it, I believe. And have a good stand. There we are. And you can do the thing there. Well, as much as I love Alien... Um, I, I just don't go in for this sort of cutesy stuff from something that should be frightening or horrible. Um, it just It's never floated my boat, but it is well produced. I am quite liking the principle of these little statues they've been giving recently, at the very least. Right, next we have the pin. What's it going to be? It was from 20th Century Fox. It is a oh, fucking hell, a really... They've really been knocking out of the park with these bloody pins recently, haven't they? Really, really nice, this one. Um, yeah, pin of a face hugger, all curled up like. Wow, and sort of proper metal and, you know, properly made. It's not just a picture on something, it's all sculpted. Hmm. Okay, ten points for that. Well done. I'm feeling you're losing all your points for this one. What is this? It's a bit of camouflage. Um, what? What? What is... Oh, apparently this is an official Predator bandana. You are shitting me. It's... <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way! It's, it's it's just some cheap material with camo on it that you can apparently make into a bandana. But but it's official Predator, guys. <laughs> fucking hell! To be official any film or any enterprise where there's even the smallest amount of camouflage in it, and somebody's wearing a bandana. Well, there we are. Um, you two can have a very small part of your Predator cosplay. <laughs> Good luck sourcing the rest of the costume and the gun. Oh, blimey. That that was very poor. <laughs> Stunningly fucking poor, actually. I can't... Wow. Wow. I mean, there's generic, and then there's that. Right. I want to believe. But what do you want to believe? Oh, it's Fox Mulder in it from the X-Files. Uh, I remember. 
seeing a list of printed out uh, passwords where when I worked for a company when the X-Files was big and half the passwords were trust no one. T-R-U-S-T-N-O-1. Yep. People are that daft with their passwords. They take them off the teleprograms. Fucking hell. Well, um, useful little book for keeping score for board games or something in, but that's not really... Hmm. Hmm. And, uh, hmm, again, that's that's not much at all, is it? A bit of a thin, very cheap paper book. And the world's most generic fucking bit of cloth. Unbelievable. Well, have we missed anything? I mean... Nope, right, and decent shirt. Nice statue if you like that kind of thing. Oh, wait! There is a picture of a predator! And a, thank God, I thought there must be bloody something. Ah, it's because it's all camouflaged, isn't it? Hang on, I've got it upside down. I think I have. That's that's fun. Hang on. By using the powers of gravity, let's attempt to sort this. Yeah, okay, I see. So, yeah. So, like, there's the predator's eyes. You see? There's, like, a claw on his hand and that. You see, it comes down. There's his legs and that. Ah, but, of course, if it's wrapped into a bandana, you will not be able to see any of that. Um, in fact, I didn't even notice it until I just saw it on this picture here. So... Bloody marvellous. God, such cheap material as well. Uh, Loot Crate Edition, X-Files hardcover journal? Journal for somebody with a very fucking short lifespan. Crikey, guys. There isn't even any lines to write on. Is it somebody who writes entirely in uh, hieroglyphics or something? Right, face I can paint, I did like. Blimey. Well, they're certainly keeping up with the whole just a couple of high quality items. Um, although, hmm, the smaller things they're putting on to just bulk it out slightly is getting worse and worse, really, which is a shame. Anyway, that was Invaders, apparently. Don't forget that. Like, uh, I was just going to say, those little booklets have completely gone now. It's just literally this, isn't it? But they do schwa you, if you remember that. My God. Well, <clears throat> that's that then. Um, before we go, actually, I'm going to give a quick plug to friends of the channel, The Cheap Show Podcast, which you will be aware of if you have watched Barshants, for it has Mr Eli Silverman and Mr Paul Gannon creating it from their evil brains. So, if you like a bit of a podcast, this is basically two... Um, how can I best describe this? Two slightly odd people bicker at each other in a vaguely obscene way, and it's fucking great. But anyway, the reason I mention it is they have just released their 100th episode, which was uh, performed live. And I know because I was there and took part in it and everything. Uh, it was in the Bill Murray pub in London, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Anyway, yes, go and have a listen if you haven't before. It's bloody good fun. Um, it's thecheapshow.co.uk, I believe. I'll stick it on the screen and put a link down below and all that kind of stuff. Right, time to clear up some of this bloody glitter before the next box, I think. Ah, it's the currently regular Aki Bento box, because they're good people who always regularly send me one, and nobody else is at the moment. So yes, it's got manga, it's got anime, I won't know what half of it is, hooray! And it's nearly always got a Funko Pop in it, but not this week, by the looks of it. Right, week? Month? Good God, imagine if they sent that weekly. They'd run out of stuff quick, wouldn't they? Right, we have a shirt of the tea, and in this shirt of the tea, is is fibres and on it <laughs> is a picture of um it's like a burning man what's going on here um so we've got like the power of ice and the power of fire together like ang from the last airbender except it clearly isn't it's somebody else entirely with like modern clothing on um, yeah, no hints on there. It is a generic Gildan shirt. I have no idea what that is. But I'll tell you what, it's an image. Right. Akibento. I like these Akibento exclusive things. They're usually something fairly basic. Become part of the crew by wearing this golden hat necklace. Oh, this is one piece, I think, isn't it? Hey, hey, look, I knew a thing, everyone. You're all shouting at me that I'm wrong now, aren't you? Um, I can't actually open it. Oop, there we are. It is a hat. The hat that that weird kid in the sandals who's on a lot of promotional stuff wears. I think that's right, anyway. Well, it's made of metal. It doesn't look anything like a hat unless you hold it like that, so if you had it actually dangling like that, people would think it was, I don't know, a pustule or, or a crashed UFO or something. Very, very odd, frankly. Instead, I'm going to look... Ooh, it's a book! A book! That's a rarity. A Kamega Kill! Story, Takahiro. Art, Tetsuya Tashiro. Good for you. 
teenage country bumpkin Tatsumi dreams of earning enough money for his impoverished village by working in the capital. But his short-lived plans go awry when he's robbed by a buxom beauty upon arrival. Penniless, Tatsumi is taken in by the lovely Miss Arya. But just when his capital dreams seem in reach yet again, Miss Arya's mansion is besieged by Night Raid. Isn't that for killing ants? A team of ruthless assassins who target high-ranking members of the upper class. As Tatsumi is quick to learn, appearances can be deceiving in the capital, and this team of assassins just might be the good guys. Whoa! A Panto exclusive version. Oh, good work, because I mean it's like a full on uh, manga thing. You've even got your colour intro, look. Evil spirits in the form of humans. Oh, well, that, that's the thing. There we are. I've read it now. I'm going to read it like Johnny Five used to in those films. I haven't read it because obviously all the pages weren't revealed to my eyes. As he used to say afterwards, but only to himself. It was never in the script. Right, next up, it is a sealed thing. Sailor Moon. Collect them all, I sure fucking won't. Ah, uh, Sailor Moon. Yeah, well I've heard of that one. Mystery Minis. I've got a few of these blind things. I must get back into the blind bags. Um. I've got to think of a way of burning them so I can no longer burn things in the house for various reasons. So I need a other method of dispatching the crap ones. But you know what? I'm just going to open this and see what's in it. Answer is Sailor Moon thing. Which one do we want? We want the rare one, obviously. Here it is. Already packaged in a bin bag so you can just stick it straight out in the trash. Um, looks like the rare ones are... Little Girl with Black Haircut and Cat. And you don't want uh, the main character there with the big hair. Because it's super not rare, guys. Same for the green one there. And another one. And, and in fact, various others. Go on. Go on. Yeah. We've got... Ba -ba 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 -da -ba -ba. Yes, indeed. The most common one out the pissing lot. One in six. Well, um... It's got a stupid Funko Pop style head. I mean, it's solid enough. It's quite nicely printed. It paints a bit off. I mean, look at the uh, where the skirt meets the shirt there. That's not very good, is it? Well, I've seen worse. Just not often. And, oh, the, you always get the random stickers in Akibento. Izuku Midoriya. I am late for a thing. Thanks for that. Um, and a box. A box of joy. Wanted. Akibento exclusive. Oh, another one. God. Puzzle cube. Fifty million dollars. Make a of Rubik's cube. Oh, Rubik's cube. I was going to say, if this is just jigsaw pieces, you lose all the points. But if it's a bloody Rubik's cube, you gain all the points. Well done. Um. Oh, look at that. Star. Random space thing, which would be virtually impossible to actually work out where it's going together. That's the one piece thing, isn't it? A map of a thing. Again, that'd be difficult to put together. A Castlevania type place, which again would be difficult to put together. And a load of swords in the ice. Why not? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it moves very freely. Some might say a little bit too freely, but um, yeah, that's actually pretty nice. I quite like that. Now I've got to work out how I got it to this stage and try and get it back. And I never ever will will i'll spend the rest of my life rotating the damn thing well that's exciting and finally oh oh what was the little badge akabento squad or maybe squad which is a new type of animal i've invented it's a cross between a squid and an ant did i get everything right uh one of two my hero academia stickers well i don't know what that was uh, straw hat necklace. I'm sure that's one piece. Um, here we go. Okay, Convento exclusive squad t-shirt. Oh, I don't, never tells you what the bloody t-shirts are. So, I don't know, legal reasons or something. There we are. Right. Well, that's quite interesting, wasn't it? Next box. And now, from the land of bloody great boxes, it is the amazing mystery box, but a specific one this time. Call of Duty. See, it's got a sticker on that says Call of Duty and like the logo. So my understanding is, every item in this very box is in some way related to the Call of Duty franchise, which is like an FPS game on your computers, isn't it? Um, I've played the first Call of Duty many, many years ago on PC, and I think I briefly played Modern Warfare 1 on Xbox 360. And that is it. I'm not much of an FPS man. But let us judge their items according to how itemy they are. There's quite a lot of stuff in it. Right, we start off with a cap. An Activision cap. It's got 
like a uh, helmeted skull on it. Is this the logo of the latest um, Call of Duty? I know not, but I'm about to find out. It is. Yes. Call of Duty, blah, blah, blah. Six critic, blah, 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 blah. Uh, not a bad hat. Yeah. Uh, it's decent quality. Quite like the uh, flashing on the side. Not entirely sure about the uh, yeah patch on there. Could you get that patch off? No, you couldn't. That is definitely on there for the long haul. Well, there we go. That is a Call of Duty thingy hat. Yeah, that'd be a pretty good hat without the logo on, I think, personally. Not massively enamoured of these skull thing hats, but that is clearly a specific Call of Duty one. Also, flat peak, not curved. Doesn't really matter. Just thought I'd point that out. Next up, Call of Duty wallet? Yes, 2016 Activision, uh, Call of Duty, blah, blah, blah. Special Combat Air Recon, Scar. Ah, I'm choking on the Roman numerals for six. Um, well, that's interesting. So it's Call of Duty embossed on it, but that doesn't matter because it's on the inside. It's got a punctured holy type thing that's been reinforced, so you can hang it from a hanger. Um, what's the, there's quite a lot of room inside. This isn't a bad wallet, actually. Sort of a leathery feel. It's this big lump of metal on it. I also quite like the design, other than the uh, massive lump of bloody metal on it. If you were to take this off, that would actually be a really serviceable and quite nice wallet. But as it is, do you really want a massive chunk of metal? Especially if you keep it in your back pocket, you're going to get your bum poked by these corners, aren't you? Um, yeah, that's kind of mm, halfway there, I think. Yeah, not bad. But uh, somewhat impractical, I feel. Next up... I don't know what this is. It's something on a lanyard. Let's have a look. Well, neck strap thing. Lanyard, I think, technically, is the one around the list. wrist, isn't it? I don't know. Um, oh, God. Well, you've got, like, a key ring, a rubber key ring of that uh, Skull Scar logo. And you've got one of those. And, oh, includes collectible sticker. If you collect stickers like this, you should probably reevaluate your life, especially because it hasn't been cut properly. Look, it's going off the side a bit there. Um... Well, that's there we are. You can, if you're going to convention where you're having to wear a badge around your neck, they'll have probably given you one of these free. So I don't really, uh, yeah, that's an old one. Right, next socks. <laughs> Call of Duty socks at last. Designed for fans by fans. Unfortunately, we're talking about the devices that cool you. No, um, crew socks. Well, that that this is a thing that has occurred. Uh, what's the quality like? I'm going to ram my finger in the hole. Oh yeah. Oh, they're good socks. They are good socks. Um, and you can have that helmeted skull on your ankles, just like you've always wanted. Fair enough. And, oh, no one's going to say, and finally, no, there is another thing. We have, oh, chunky metal key ring. Quite a pleasing one, actually. Um, it's that uh, skull helmet logo again. If you like that logo, you are in with joys on this. Much more, much more clearly defined than it is on the old uh, cap there, if you look. Uh, yeah, that's a really chunky bit of metal, actually. You ain't going to lose your keys off that. Yeah, that's good. That's decent. And finally, it's a teeny tiny backpack! <laughs> For little elves, little elves, to take their cupcakes to uh, wherever elves go. Um, Elf school, I don't know. Um, yeah, so it goes over one shoulder. It's designed for one shoulder. Uh, it's got a lot of like, quite large straps on it. Also, quite a lot of storage space. How big does it open inside? That is often the make or break for a bag. Oh, yeah, it does really open out. Uh, multiple compartments inside. Nothing to see because there's no light in there. Um, yeah, you've got something you can put like something in there. Bits of the side to keep a bottle or something. Or no, no, you couldn't keep a bottle in there because that's separate bits. I don't know. Did you do it the other side? No. Hmm, not sure what they're for in that case. Rubberized back to keep it from moving around too much. And hmm, what clips on that? Can we find out? Hmm, I feel like there should be something in here that goes over the top and clips on it. I'm not finding it though. The mystery of the missing clip. Well, I'm sure it's on there somewhere. Well, that is a thing, isn't it? It's quite a nice little thing to put over one shoulder. Um, it's not too ostentatiously Call of Duty. You've got that uh, skull there properly um, sewn onto it, actually. It's all uh, properly done, that. Um, yeah, if you want that, that is also a thing. So there we are. If you want your Call of Duty stuff and you like all this, that is a box you can buy with your money and then they'll send it to you through the post. You know how that works, don't you? Um, I don't think I'm going to get much out of that, actually. And the key ring is always potentially useful, but I've got a lot of them anyway. Um, the little bag. 
I say I do quite like the idea of a small bag to go over the shoulder, but equally I have a lot of bags, so um, that's a slightly difficult one. Um, it feels slightly waterproof inside though, which could be useful. Yeah, the bag's about all I'd get out of that. I mean, maybe that, if I could pull the metal bit off. Mm, don't know, do I really want to see the words Call of Duty whenever I open my wallet? Probably not. Right, next box. Mm. 